Hey everyone, this is Anna here and today I want to show you a small load that I had. So it's a kill non load, but very small uh, batch that I had. Uh, I had some issues with the clay that I was using uh, called Dark Star by Kentucky Mud Works. Um, so that clay, it was announced uh, just I don't know how long ago it wasn't that long ago but i didn't know that they had changed the formula of the clay so that the clay is no longer a cone six clay so it had to be fired at a lower temperature like maybe a five or five and a half uh, and i didn't know that when i bought it um, i wasn't told that so i found out by searching uh, on facebook and then on their group um, they had a notification there and then i found out through other people saying that the formula had changed it was actually another person that had mentioned that the formula changed and that's how i found that out uh, well that was the reason why i had some issues with pinholes um, on <coughs> A few of the mugs. Unfortunately, there were the mugs that had the sculpted birds uh, that I refired because I thought maybe if I refire, I could cover that, even though the clay is vitrified. Um, so it creates these pinholes where the manganese specks are. So it has a lot of speckles on the clay. But sometimes if you have a little one here and there, like maybe one or two, I'm not worried about it. But this one seemed to have a little more and they were bigger than the usual. Uh, and I'll show you the ones. So I decided to, uh, like this one here, I decided to uh, refire and then it really, it went south. It, it went like, it, it just... I don't even know how to explain what happened, but it does this bloating uh, uh, where there's gases inside the clay, I think, and it bloats like little bubbles. It doesn't, it doesn't come up to the surface or anything, like it doesn't burst or like a crater or anything like that, but it doesn't look appealing uh, at all. And it doesn't cover, it just makes things worse. So this clay cannot be refired. So you only have one, one chance to get it right. So now I know, and unfortunately I had like 20 more pieces that I, oh, sorry, I touched my microphone. Uh, I had about 20 or so pieces that I had to fire and they were all this clay. So, um, needless to say, I don't think I'll be using this clay anymore, even though I loved it at first. But with this issue, I'm not going to divide my loads into one cone and, and then fire to a, a higher cone. So that's not going to happen. So the good thing is that I used all the clay that I had, but I had the stuff that I had to paint you know, that were left to go to a gallery and they were all this clay. So anyways, I've lost a few pieces. I've lost uh, these two mugs here. They were the bird mugs. Uh, <clears throat> I also refired a jar that I had with a little bluebird. Uh, the color is beautiful, but I had the bluebird um, lid but inside is just the holes the pinholing just got worse has nothing to do with uh slow cool schedule because that's what i use um it seems like the longer the holds just make things worse so anyways it was because of the temperature that caused that and um so I refire, even though I refired at a cone five or it got to like my, my top shelves are a lower, a little lower temperature. The bottom one got to a 5.5 and then the top one got to a five, uh, which was okay. Cause I just had a, a one plate over there, but 
anyways, during the refiring, this didn't work. Um, but the, I don't know if you can see, the, the glaze is beautiful, the colors and everything. So I think I'm going to keep it for myself, the jar. I can put tea, my tea bags in here. Anyways, it's really cute. Um, let me get the, the top for you guys to see. So here's the top. Anyways, I thought it was really cute. Uh, one of the speckles on the clay, the specks are like close to his eye and makes it look like he's crying. <laughs> he has like a tear, but that's the lid. Uh, it's a, still a cute jar, but I'm keeping this one. I'll keep it for putting my tea bags in there, my kitchen. Um, so other than that, I had a successful firing because I did fire to a lower temperature. So the peak temperature was 2167. And I usually fire to 2185 which is kind of like a cone 5.5 or close to a cone 6. Uh, so this one is lower temperature with the same hold. I believe it's a 5-minute hold at, at the peak temperature and then at 1900 drops to uh, 20 minutes, I think I did. So I'm going to use that for the rest of the mugs. I think I have 8 mugs eight more mugs to paint and then that was it that's it that's gonna be it but here are the successful ones so it does like lower temperature this is the cuerda seca technique little bud vase uh, and that i'm super happy with the colors on the bird on my hibiscus the leaves and everything i i really like the colors how it turned out the vine I really, it's very colorful, so I really use a lot of colors on this one. And then the bottom just has, so my signature, I also sign with the oil mixture. It's got some flowers here too on the bottom. So that turned out really cute. So I'm happy with this one. Um, and I was worried because I used some of the Mako, and I know Mako uh, doesn't look that good with, when uh, it is a little lower temperature, but it still looks okay. This one is uh, Norse Blue, and I use that in and out. And here I use lemons with a little flower. It's just a, a ball. But I used also Cuerda Seca on this one, and that turned out really cute. Again, that's just plain Norse blue. Um, this one is a little incense holder, one of those that has like a little cone shape, or it can be a little votive uh, or those little small candles uh, in there. It's like a little chimney. That turned out good too. And... Yeah, the, any clay that has those specks, it is normal to have the little, it, it kind of does the indents where the manganese specks are, um, but before I just had too many and, and they were too big, so this one much better at a lower temperature, so that worked out well. Um, I have two mugs. I don't know if you guys remember, I was going to refire uh, two of my, the cockatoo mugs that had the uh, fairy rose. I think it's fairy rose, the name. Uh, the pink from Coyote. Yeah, it's fairy rose, right? Uh, so that was really kind of thick and bumpy. And I used uh, Spectrum Soft Red on top because I knew that that was a runny glaze. Um, so I used that inside and that worked out, that smoothed out pretty well. And I also used that on in here on the, on the handle. But look how, I didn't know this combination, but soft red over fairy rose makes it a real, like a neon pink. <laughs> I didn't know that. So look at the color. 
like a real deep uh, pink, even brighter than Fairy Rose is already uh, a dark pink. But with the soft red over, it makes it like a real, almost like a magenta color. <laughs> but anyways, it did fix the issue that I had. So I'm glad I, I saved uh, these two mugs. So that was this one and this one here, which are porcelain. Same thing on the inside. I put soft red on the handle. And I also use soft red here because I didn't like how I had like a line of the drips and that seemed to bring everything down more. And I got really lucky because it didn't go over my foot. And I think I mentioned that before to you guys that I do a little groove. Um, I will try to make more videos with some of the things that I do to avoid some issues like the glaze running off your pot. Uh, so that seems to help quite a bit. So this one did not, it pulls in here, but it doesn't run off. So happy with that one. Um, this one is cute also, but the glaze is uh, Amaco Cirrus Flow. And the Cirrus Flow here gave me a lot more of those tan specks but it gives it almost looks like that rustic look um so i like it it's just not what i expected to do but it's got the lemons and i did the yellow on the handles as well as well a nice bowl nice size This is one of the other trays that um, I told you guys I was going to do uh, using the pottery form that I pressed and I pressed it on, uh, you know, on the edge and then in the middle. Gives some interest and I did some plumeria flowers. So, and I left it unglazed, just the raw clay. I do like the color this clay is like a real dark, deep maroon color and I just need to smooth out uh, with the light sandpaper to be very smooth but it's a cute little tray and I can tell you what my favorite is oh I have this jar which is uh, it could be a cookie jar it's got irises <laughs> I did. I didn't go all the way around. So the back, I only painted them uh, with cuerda seca also, but I painted them on, on the front. And then I, I always make two lids. So I have this lid, this one here, which is also just white with the purple and blue on the, on the top. And then I have this one. Oh, and I use the turquoise inside. So, I don't know. I think I like this one a little better than the other one that is more domed shaped. But look at the colors on this. I'm very happy with how it turned out. It's a nice size uh, jar also, little jar. Um... So some of my favorites, new design that I really liked. This one is a dogwood branch with flowers. But look at the, look at the pink. Turned out so good. It turned out better than I expected. So that's always a good thing when things go better than you think. Uh, and remember that stroke and coat can be fired at low temperature. It can even, even be fired to an 06. So this one being fired at a lower temperature brings out more the colors. So they, the colors look a little brighter. So the pink, when you fire at a hotter temperature, it fades a little bit more. It's still pink, but this one, since it was lower, it fired um, the color st stayed brighter and true to the color. 
true to the pink. I really like this one. And I used the uh, Honey Flux. And the Honey Flux at the low temperature didn't seem to be bothered with the low temperature at all. So it looks very glossy and nice. So it's good to know because now for the other mugs, I think I'm going to use that as well. And it's a neutral color, so I can use any colors on the outside and it stays just that off-white color inside. And here has the, my signature with some flowers also. So this is, a, this is one of my favorites. New design. have never done one like this before. But uh, this one is, I think, is my very favorite one that came out of this load. Look at this pink. <laughs> I used uh, a light blue, almost like a sky blue for the outside. I used my turquoise blue that turned out beautifully inside. So that glaze, I am going to show you guys how I mix it. It is the Celso Chan uh, turquoise. It works at cone five all the way through, from what I've tested, is cone six. But it looks beautiful also at cone, at a lower temperature cone. I think I got a 5.5 .5 cone, but it, it was very glossy, very nice. And this is on porcelain. But look at the design, look at the colors. This has got to be one of my favorite mugs now. And I am going to use more of this... Um, this color for the background because I think it, it just pops. It makes all the other colors kind of pop. That's my hibiscus. Very colorful. And what they call that? Uh, Monstera is a variegated Monstera. I love it. So that's my very favorite one. <laughs> so like I said, this was a small load. Um, you guys can tell which one was your favorite. I think this one is my favorite mug. Um, one more. I almost forgot. This is a tulip, my tulip plate. So I don't make that many plates. Uh, on the back, it's just plain. I decided to sign here, uh, in, you know, on the bottom here. I usually sign on the back, but because sometimes I want to sand the bottom, uh, I left it without my signature here, and now I can make it real smooth. And then, um, yeah, the glazes came out well. The texture looks really nice. These are tulips and brunera are these leaves here with these little purple flowers. If I can get real close. You guys can see some of the details. And I was inspired by the tulips I have on my yard now. They are these colors here. So I just, it just came to mind that I wanted to put them on some of my work. So I think I have some pictures that I'm going to post uh, with me holding some of these tulips. They're huge. And they are this bright of red with orange and yellow. So... That's my plate. And do I have anything else? Mm. I think that's it. Um, I might have, yeah, I might be doing like a second sale. I won't, I won't sell the, I won't sell anything that has a, a defect that makes the piece not function, functional. Uh, but I do have some minor uh, ones that I have that remember some mugs that touch the bottom of the mugs uh, even though I sand it really well I I buff it so it's very very smooth but it's still on the back of my mind it's not like a perfect you know it has some imperfections so I sell those as seconds just like if I grind the bottom of something because the glaze ran, uh, it does, it's not shiny anymore like it is the rest of the clay. So I'll sell that as a second as well. So I will have a few pieces that I will have a sale as a seconds, as seconds. And 
I will have uh, a giveaway coming soon and I'll keep that a surprise as to which mug is going to be the giveaway, but I will announce soon. And I will have one more small load coming soon, which are the eight more mugs. And each mug has a different design that I'm super excited because a lot of them are things that I painted for the first time. And I can't wait to show you guys, hopefully next week, eight more mugs coming soon. So thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> See you soon. Bye-bye.